Primitive Life, a novel by Louise Richardson, as read by the author. Chapter 1, Academia, Part 1. In late summer of the year 2001, Leah Pollock endured the general biology game the first day of class on the Habsburg, Texas campus of Central Texas State University. Her thoughts were consumed by her once and present professor. She wished she had dropped the course and Dr. Roy Nordstrom from her schedule. She knew already it was going to be a long semester. Leah, Roy's off on one of his tangents because Hal Rodriguez makes the misstep of referring to cows as more primitive than humans. So basically, a primitive mammal like a cow, say, has most of the same organs, bones, DNA that we have, Hal says. We, Mr. Rodriguez, Roy says, closing the trap Hal set for himself. Well, yeah, my uh uh-oh streams from the back of the classroom. This brings up an excellent point, declares Roy the pedagogue. What is primitive? In terms of comparative anatomy, I mean. Like Alexander the Great marching through Persia, Roy takes possession of the chalkboard as smug as he gets, dividing the green slate into two columns. He thumbs through the biology text on his desk to prepare the next assault. Okay, name some primitive traits. Miss Pollock, he fires out at me. So I decide to play his game and answer. A tail, which he chalks up under primitive, and no tail under advanced. What else, Miss Barnstone? Roy calls to another victim. Four legs like a quadruped, she says, for the primitive column, just like a mouse taking the cheese. And he lists it on the board, then crosses to the textbook, pages through and dog ears a second page. Anything else? Yes, an explosion of raised hands sends a barrage of examples. Hairy body, Paws instead of hands, exoskeleton, egg laying, cold blooded, color blindness. That's plenty, Dr. Roy. I know everything Nordstrom announces at last, slapping the chalk dust from his hands, surveying the stack of words before him, and ending with a self satisfied, interesting. And just as I knew he would, he goes for the loaded textbook. Mr. Combs, read paragraph three from the top of page 194, would you? Roger Combs fumbles through the text, as always, then finds his place. Paleontologists digging in Argentina have found what they believe is one of the earliest dinosaurs yet discovered, he reads. As many experts have predicted, The creature seems to exhibit traits thought to be primitive to all types of dinosaurs. Roy jumps on me again. Please list those traits, Miss Pollock. Luckily, I found the page, too. These traits include bipedalism, I recite, S-shaped neck, generalized carnivorous teeth. What was the first on the list, Mrs. Sharp? Roy interrupts. Bipedalism, Dr. Nordstrom, emphasizes the older black lady with a shock of gray at her widow's peak. So, in dinosaurs, walking on two legs is the primitive state, Roy says. Let's go back to page 82, shall we? Mr. Chatterjee, Mohandas Chatterjee, is jotty on the spot. Pentadactyl hands, being primitive, For tetrapods such as amphibians, Roy pounces once more with. And what do we mean by pentadactyl hands, Mr. Rodriguez? 
Five fingers, Mr. Rodriguez asks. And how many fingers do you have on each hand, Roy presses? Five, as it happens. Is that about the class average, asks Roy. I thought so. Therefore, we might say that we humans are primitive tetrapods based solely on our finger count. But it's more complicated than that. Yes, it's much more complicated than that, Mr. Rodriguez. You are absolutely right. What I'm trying to show here, though, is the trap we fall into by assuming, one, that common language and scientific language mean exactly the same things, and two, that there has been some sort of evolutionary progress leading to humans. That's just not so. We are one of the latest species to come along, and we have inherited billions of mutations, piled upon billions of mutations, rendering some of us capable of writing operas, performing brain surgery, or calculating lunar trajectories. However, cell by cell, your friend the cow is just as complicated as you and me, all of us. Roy relishes this sort of thing too much. Does the cow have a five-fingered hand, he continues. No, it has hooves, but it's descended from creatures with fingers and toes. Hooves are a local adaptation in ungulates such as cattle, deer, antelopes, etc., which make covering long migratory distances much more efficient than flabby fingers and toes ever could. Our cattle more or less evolved than fish, Mr. Chatterjee. I would say more so, Mr. Chatterjee ventures. I believe you said color blindness is a primitive trait, Roy counters. Do cows see color? I don't think so. That's right. They may see some shades of some colors, but very little. Do fish see color? Probably not. Actually, they do, Mr. Chatterjee. Roy has brought us around to the point he wants to make. And reptiles and birds and insects and all manner of non-mammals see vibrant colors, he says. The rule of thumb is if you see a colorful animal, it probably has color vision. And color communicates danger, sexual maturity, health and vigor, aggressiveness, all sorts of signals necessary for survival. Among the mammals, only primates have re-evolved color vision to distinguish which fruit is ripe and safe to eat. Roy could go on like this all morning. And he has, when I awake with a start, to see him hovering over me. Miss Pollock, he says formally, may I see you in my office after last class. You can say it now, Roy, I tell him, and you can call me Leah. Nobody's here. I think it's run its course, don't you, he says. Summer school is over. Time to end summer flags. Is that what your wife thinks? I shoot back at him. Faye doesn't know about us, and I want to keep it that way. I knew it would come to this. Fine, I say. Good, he says. But I won't let it go. Will she be with us on the field trip next month, I ask? I think he's getting pissed off. It's over, Leah. Right, I say skeptically. I knew it was all winding down, but I still didn't want to let go. Maybe I could corner him during the field trip if Faye doesn't tag along. End of Primitive Life, Chapter 1, Academia, Part 1